what happens when you have so and I had just texted you and told you to start recording. Thank you. It's just, this is when you have so much things in your mind. Again, side visits, they screw with you. <laughs> they screw with you so much. Again, welcome to your Academy. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to keep sharing the links um, in the chat. And Kimberly, the floor is all yours. All right. Good morning, guys. So um, I'm Kimberly Warfield. I've talked to you guys before, and let me start sharing my screen a little bit. Um, so I'm talking about something that has affected me greatly over my career. So I've been with the University of North Texas since 1999. Um, I walked in as an administrative assistant, very young lady, um, myself, that was back then. and, and uh, had several specialties with me here at the medical school and was learning my way. And I would say probably not more than, you know, six, eight weeks into the new job. Um, and I'd worked for several hospital systems before that, but um, my supervisor came in and said, hey, I have a residency program. I wasn't real sure what that was at the time back then. And it was very different back then as well. Um, the uh, program director, a internal medicine doctor needed an assistant as she needed a coordinator back then. So we've already been called coordinators, we were called assistants and um, said, but, you know, she's difficult to work with. Nobody wants to work with her. We're going to give you this job. I was like, oh, great. Thanks so much. Um, and then um, Kimberly, ended up, can you guys hear I'm me? Sorry. Okay? Yes, I'm sorry. Let me stop you. Um, there are several in the chat that say uh, you, you sound very muffled. I was going to oh, ask okay. you to close your door and possibly speak up. Okay. The door shut. So let me get closer here. Is that better, guys? I can't see the chat. Hold on. Let me minimize my screen. Um, not so much. Kimberly, I have my headphones with a mic. You want to borrow those? See if that helps. Yeah, one second. Let me look. Oh, hold on. I'm going to stop my video so I can dig in a drawer. One second, guys. Okay. All right, guys. I'm here. I'm going to look like my teenager who wears headphones 24 7, and I'm going to plug this in. And we're going to see if this works better. You'll probably need to change your Zoom settings. Kimberly, go to the mic and there's a arrow, top arrow, and choose the, select a microphone, choose the microphone you're using. How's that? Is that better? Oh, better. Perfect, guys. Okay, okay. So start again bear with me thank you so much um so i've been here at i don't know i'll repeat myself just a little bit i've been here at tcom since 1999 um this pro this topic is very near and dear i actually volunteered and then i've regretted that ever since but now that i've got it done kind of good with that um just because i suffer with with wh why me why should i talk about this subject right um so when I started here in 99 as an administrative assistant uh, years ago, um, my boss said, you know, I have this program director and this internal medicine program and um, I need someone to work with her. It was kind of voluntold to do it, you know, um, and she's difficult to work with and it's a lot of work and but I'm going to give it to you. I was like, I, I didn't have a choice. Right. It's kind of kind of what um I fell into at the time and I ended up falling in love with program coordination and uh, in, in the residency program world in general, right? 
So, um, but I did struggle. I've struggled for years. I struggled with this pro with this presentation. Why me? Why should I do it? Right. Um, so let me share my screen. Can you guys still see my screen? Let me see. No. Okay. Let me. All right. Here it is. Okay. How is that? Let me do this view. We can see it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. So again, um, currently I manage the family medicine residency program here in coordination with uh, Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine and HCA Fort Worth. And I've been doing this, this program since um, 2018. Uh, I had taken a two-year break from this career uh, prior to that, but um, for years I did internal medicine, dermatology, palliative care, you name it. I kind of had a little uh, a little bit of every world, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get right into the presentation and then feel free to talk, ask questions. Um, I think that's the best way we learn. So imposter syndrome. And I also, I picked this travel thing because that's kind of my jam, but I always feel like when we're out traveling and we're in a new town or we're in a new country, um, I was in Barcelona right before COVID shut that country down that uh, you're kind of like, oh, do I belong here? And I kind of feel like that's kind of an imposter syndrome feeling like, do I belong here? Are they going to know that I'm a tourist? You know, and of course they know, right? So the objectives of today, overview of imposter syndrome. Um, I've learned a lot about that. Uh, I always knew I had the feeling, but I didn't know the uh, where it came from. Like, when was it first talked about? Um, types and causes of imposter syndrome and our strategies to combat it. There's all kinds of different ways. And then um, the conclusion and talking about, um, like I said, ways to combat it. And then questions and answers. I want to see what everybody else feels about it. When did you experience it? Things like that. So imposter syndrome came into the mainstream um, in about 1978. There was one of the first articles was by uh, Pauline Clance and Susan Imes, um, Imposter Syndrome and High Achieving Women, uh, the Dynamics and the Therapeutic Intervention. Uh, believed, it's believed to be the most prevalent in underrepresented and disadvantaged groups um, at that time. I think now there's some TED Talks out there about it, which are very interesting. Um, but now I think it's it it hits seventy percent of our population is the latest numbers. Um, so there's a lot of articles, a lot of research. Um, so what is imposter syndrome? And obviously, I forgot my subtitle there. So there you go. There's my first mistake, and I'm going to make some. And that's my issue. When I make small mistakes, it it's very it's very hard for me. It's almost it is almost crippling sometimes. Um, but I've learned to okay, you know, it's one thing. Uh, so persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts and skills. And people suffering from imposter syndrome may be at an increased risk for anxiety. Um, I love this picture. I have been this person in this situation with all the white coats before. Um, I don't belong here. They're going to find out that they're going to find out I really don't know what I'm doing. And that's my self-doubt. That's my personal story. Um, so, and I, and I fought it for years. So now I'm 23 years into this career, um, twice certified, tag me. Uh, so, you know, those are my, that's what I always go back to. Like you, you've done this, you know how to do this. Um, when I've gotten a new program, I still feel like, oh, that's different. You know, the, the guidelines, ACGM guidelines are different for different programs, what's required. Um, it's all constant learning. Um, so imposter syndrome for me is fear of failure in a nutshell. And um, it originated with graduate students, which I can see. Um, it was most common, again, in graduate students, adult learners, and women. So I went to college later than most of my peers, mid-20s. I had two kids. I had a kid at home and one on the way. So I will tell you, in college is probably when I first felt this feeling the most. Sitting around, everybody's young, they're going out partying, they're studying, they have their study groups, and I'm going home to work and to take care of a baby. And then later in my college career, I had another one on the way. So we talked about the um, Clance and Imes article. Well, they also had a scale. So both the scales regarding imposter syndrome kind of hit 
some of the same items. Um, the first one, fear of failure, which we've talked about, uh, the attribution to success or luck, error or charm versus your ability, right? Um, the desire to stand out and the feeling of having given others a false impression was the first, the first scale for uh, Harvey. And then Clance's scale, she measured um, the fear of evaluation, the fear that success cannot be repeated. So, um, and I've struggled with that in particularly in site visits. Early on with AOA versus ACGME, I felt like we had a lot more site visits and inspections. And every time I had one, I was like, oh, I'm not going to do as well as I did on the last one. Um, feeling that one is less capable than our peers. I feel like in this situation that um, the one we're less capable than our peers, I feel like social media has just blown this up, right? Um, so can I move on? And, and yes, I'm reading notes because that just makes me feel a little more comfortable that I won't forget something. So types of imposter syndrome. So just think about what you identify. Do you identify with any of these? Um, and maybe a little bit of all of them. I could kind of pull a little bit of all of them out. So the perfectionist, uh, you're focused on something is done and will feel like a failure with even the smallest mistake. So say, you know, I forgot my subtitle heading. I didn't delete that earlier. So that, that does bother me. Um, the expert, this type is concerned about what and how much they know or can do. They feel like um, a failure if they have the tiniest lack of knowledge in something. Well, I wanna put this out there because it's been on my mind. So if, if we can't know everything about everything that the requirements for all of our programs, we can't, especially if you have more than one program, I used to have five at one time. How was I gonna know everything? How was I gonna be the expert? Well, TAGME says, you don't have to be the expert. TAGME says you have to know where to find it and share the correct information. So that's been um, one of my saving graces. Um, the soloist, the top cares about the who. They feel that they cannot take help from others if they wanna be successful. Again, something I've struggled with and um, been blessed with a team that comes and says, what can I do to help you? Um, which is, is very good for me because I very rarely will reach out for help. Um, the natural genius, they measure their worth by how and when accomplishments happen in terms of ease and speed. Um, they're ashamed to take extra time or need to or, or the need to redo something. Um, this one happens most in the transition from high school to college or from college to a, a, a master's program or um, PhD. And in the, in the point that everything came really easy to you, um, you didn't have to study for a test. You could sit down and take it. And then things get a little bit harder. There's a little more thought process. So that manifests in, in that realm usually. Um, and then there's the superwoman, the superman, the super student. Um, this type measures their accomplishments by how many roles they can juggle and excel in. Um, and in our world where everything comes at us so fast, I think this is a very popular one, um, especially in regards to our residents. I see it a lot when they realize when they're in the hospital, they're on rotations, they have their scholarly activity coming at them and they can't do it all. And then they, they have a fear of failure and the imposter syndrome kicks in. So, and as you can see, um, all these tops are dependent on being the best way, the best person or the best we can in some way. Um, Imposter syndrome takes over when we're unable to do the job up to the standards we've set for ourselves. So common feelings. Um, believing colleagues and supervisors overestimate you. Um, creating a cycle of self-doubt. Sabotaging ourselves. Um, feeling dissatisfied with our job. I struggled with that a lot several years ago and that's why I left for a couple of years. Um, I think we all feel that at some time, feeling undertrained. Um, I don't know a coordinator that doesn't feel undertrained until you've been doing this for years. Um, avoiding asking for raises. Work really, really hard. You're a workaholic. I don't know that we can't work really, really hard in our roles, but some of us, that's what we do to prove our worth. Um, declining opportunities outside our role. 
Um, years ago, had someone asked me to do a presentation like this, I would have immediately said no and like avoided them like the plague. I wouldn't have, there would have been no way. Um, refuse to celebrate our successes. So I think this is huge. Um, and I'm, I'm really bad at downplaying my successes um, because my feeling um, is that I, I never have enough time to do anything as well as I want to. Um, that's my underlying feeling. Um, I do so much, I never do anything well. And I actually put that in my evaluation more than one year. Um, other things I've heard people say, um, I feel like an imposter here with all these really bright people. And I can't see the chat, but if you feel any of these, if you've heard any of these or you felt this, just raise your hand. Um, I feel like a fraud. I'm so successful. Why do I feel like a fake? I have been successful in multiple site visits. Um, I have been the I have been asked to stay in a room with a with a, a site visit. Um, I don't want to say inspector. I'm not sure what the right word is anymore. But um, with the the physicians coming in to do the site visits, while my program director was asked to leave, um, and this this happened in a dermatology site visit years ago, and uh, the physician there doing the site visit. Um, the program director kept talking over me um, and we, pre we prepare all the used to be binders, right? I had, I would come in with 20 binders. Okay. And I knew where everything was. And so uh, my program director kept trying to talk over me um, and that, that's fine. I'm okay. I'll take a back seat any day, but the site visit, um, the physician said, Hey, you should, um, you should step out and let she and I go through these binders. She knows where everything is. Because he didn't, I mean, he had had the binders, but, you know, I put them together. And so just celebrating that, like, okay, he recognizes I know what I'm doing. Um, I'm not as good as other people think I am. I have them fooled. Um, and I may be found out later. That's a big common um, theme that I've heard. Um, obviously, I'm in this position because my abilities have been overestimated. Um, I don't, I don't ever think that's true. I think when we choose people, we, we, you live up to what your, the expectations. I think we can, we can always learn. Um, maybe you don't know everything when you get the job, but this is always, always learning. You're always learning. It's always, um, we're always capable of more is, is always my feeling. Um, I don't want people to think I thought I was something I was not. Um, my family expects me to make some massive impact on this world, and I live in constant fear of disappointing them. Now, this is a core place where some of these imposter syndrome feelings come from. Um, so as I move on, I'm multitasking here, guys. Um, so you things that you may, I'm sorry. Let me let me interrupt with a second. It's been a flurry of raise hands and oh, okay. comments in the chat because yes, we've all of us <laughs> have been in the same place. Well, I'm excited because that makes me feel better about what I'm talking about. So um I just and I want us to normalize being able to talk to each other and talking about our fears and sharing um our roles professionally. Cause I think a lot of times we, we can hide our feelings professionally because we don't want anybody to, to doubt us. Right. Um, so, uh, what you may recognize in yourself and others with imposter syndrome, um, minimizing positive feedback, as I told you, I'm, I'm a culprit of that, um, over preparing. Oh my goodness. I can tell you the pieces of paper and the research and everything I've done for this presentation or anything like this that I've done. I've speak, I've spoken at AACOM, I've spoken at um, different meetings here in Texas. Um, and I'm always, I would rather be over-prepared than under-prepared. That's just me. Um, not trying for fear of failure. Again, um, early on there, I was terrified, terrified. Um, Distrust of others. I haven't struggled with this as much, um, but I, I have peers who have just struggled with it greatly. Um, introversion. So here at UNTHSC, we have a faculty development center and they're part of our, our department, our core department. And we've done Myers-Briggs extensively over the years. Um, I used to 
to, I used to um, test out high extrovert. And as the years have gone, I'm more introverted. And I feel like I've just been more protective. And my introversion comes from protection of my work time versus my family time and just time to get things done. Like I can't chat a lot with others that, and I am social. I love my colleagues, but I have to shut the door. I have to come in my office and even tell my residents, sorry, this is, this is no chat time. Like we've got to get stuff done. Um, fear of evaluation. Whoever goes into their evaluation, their annual evaluation going, oh, okay. I, I, I've never gone into an evaluation without some kind of stress or fear. Um, guilt about success. Overestimating others while underestimating yourself. I think we do have a huge lack of, um, and I speak globally, um, of just not believing in ourselves. I mean, even, and as women, I think it's more prevalent. I know I have some men here, but um, it's prevalent in everyone, but it is more prevalent in women. So um, I've got, I've blown this picture up in the next slide um, with the imposter syndrome. Um, it talks about high achieving individuals are marked by an inability to internalize their accomplishments and a persistent fear of being exposed as a fraud. So the, we've talked about this. This is kind of the theme. Um, crippling perfectionism is common. I suffer with that um, and I have to work through it, especially during um, site visits and speaking with my peers and things like that. Day-to-day -day work, talking during orientation, talking during didactics, I got that. I, I've, I've developed some, some skills and I've got that. Um, but when I'm in other situations, I still stuffle, suffer with that crippling anxiety and fear. I've had it for two days coming into this. Um, so one of the things I want to say is our careers as program co coordinators or administrators, I'm not sure it depends on what your title is. Um, it's, it's all similar. Um, our jobs are nothing but the pressure to achieve and to finish projects and to move on to the next one. There's no slow season for us. So some causes of imposter syndrome. Um, as I spoke about before, some of the core feelings from this can come from your family dynamic, your expectations, um, that um, and the value of success and perfectionism in childhood that can stay with an individual throughout their lives. Um, you know, growing up, going, um, always talking about you're going to go to college, maybe you're going to be a doctor. Your parents are just really building you up, um, and and in an in a innocent way to just give you um, to make you think about your future. I did it with my own kids. I've, I've done it. I, I'm the mother of five. Um, there was not an option. You will go to college. And I found out later that this, that's not the option for everyone. And that was a little, that was damaging to some of my kids. It was hard, but you know, you, you want the best for your children. Um, and so sometimes, so sometimes it starts with your family. Um, and then um, cultural expectations, different cultures put different values on education, career, um, and everybody has a different definition of success, right? Um, Growing up, my definition of success was um, a good marriage, a couple of kids. I was staying home. I was raising kids. I was doing this, doing that. Um, that's no longer my definition of success. My definition of success for myself um, is peace and happiness and finding worth in what I do. Um, everybody's is different. Um, individual personality traits. Perfectionism can lead to imposter syndrome. Um, comparisons, playing the comparison game. Here I go again with social media. It's soul crushing. Um, it can lead to, you know, feeling down, inadequate. Um, you're not achieving the same things at the same rate as you're, you're the others. And if you're in a big group, like I used to work for UT Southwestern here in Texas. Um, and uh, I, it was a small stint there, but it taught me so much. I did a pathology fellowship there. Um, everybody seemed to be, and, and like I said, I was there for a short time, but I was just amazed at how many coordinators there were because I've never worked in a big institution like that where there were so many coordinators and everybody had different goals. And I had to say, okay, I, I've been doing this for years. Like, just stop comparing yourself. It's a different institution. But um, 
and then social media, right? Um, and again, as I said, you know, we don't have a slow season as a coordinator. Like we don't get a chance to slow down or I feel like I don't. Um, I feel like this is why our governing bodies are finally putting the value on our wellness, not just our residents' wellness, but our wellness, because they realize we, a lot of times it's just you. Um, I am very excited that the world of coordinators and program management has started having assistance for your coordinators. You have a, you have a, be a resident manager, different things. That has been wonderful. Um, but in general, coordinators are still working on their own and doing all the tasks right from them. We're all self-regulated. So I um, want to talk about impact on women. Um, women are more likely than men to experience imposter behaviors. Um, family messages, societal messages, gender socialization. Um, and a lot of women choose to hide their opinions. Um, and I want to speak to this. So I have learned in my career, the more that I speak up in a situation, the more confidence I've learned to have, the more um, I find my voice, the more I'm comfortable with my place at the table in my position. Um, our jobs are self-driven and self-regulated in many programs. Um, so we, we're guiding ourselves. We're going by our guidelines and then our corporate entities are sending out what we're required to do, but we're accomplishing those. So be comfortable in your role, be comfortable in speaking up and finding your place at the table. So I have a little activity um, and I'm gonna go here. It's just a little quiz and we're just gonna talk through it. Um, I'm gonna minimize, I'm not sure if I can do this right. Aria, can you tell me if there's any chat? I just wanna kind of have open conversation, but kind of think about these questions. Um, so taking a step back, if you answer yes to any of these questions, you can probably relate to imposter syndrome. Um, do you chalk your success up to luck or timing or computer error? Um, do, be, do you believe if I can do this, anybody can? Because I'm going to tell you, if you're a program coordinator, anybody can't do your job. Um, do you agonize over the smallest flaws in your work? I do, and I've gotten better, but yes. Um, are you crushed by even constructive criticism? Seeing it as evidence of your ineptness. Um, are you afraid that important people will find out that you're not as capable as you think you are? And do you worry it's a matter of time before you're found out? These are common um, feelings and thoughts in imposter syndrome. So the chat is going crazy. Some of them All right. know to some of the questions, but others are like, yes, all of them. Um, uh, a resounding yes. Um, yes, at times, yes to all. No, no, yes, yes, yes. It's it's a consensus. Awesome. Well, I, mean, I don't want to say awesome because I don't like for people to feel this way. One of the things I wanted this talk to do for our community was to um validate our feelings and let you know that you are doing a good job, that you are not an imposter, that you are right where you're supposed to be. And so, um, so more than once, um, so when I talk about the second one really spoke to me, do you believe if I can do it, anybody can? So more than once, I've personally heard within my own group, um, I don't want your job. How do you do that? Like, why do you do that? Um, yeah, not anybody could do our jobs. Um, so I have spoken about, I've stepped away from coordination from 2016 to 2018. Um, I was burned out. I was tired. There was a lot going on um, personally, but more professionally. Um, I had multiple programs. I was helping with the institutional uh, coordination. I was tired and I just felt like no one was seeing me. So I, I had the ability to step away for a couple of years. Um, the One of my supervisors here at TCOM called me back and she said, hey, can you help me with some projects? We unfortunately had to close a program here in Texas do some other special projects for her. And that helped me regain my space in this world and feel important and feel valued. I think if we don't feel valued, that's where um, that's where some of these feelings come in. And we just, it's hard. I mean, what we do is not easy. Um, 
but that that was kind of my rebuild story to come back into this world. Um, so let's talk about some good news with imposter syndrome. So the good news, and you're in good company. Um, I'm not sure how many people are here today. Last time I looked, it was about 133. Um, right now so we're more, to 205. Oh, wow. I didn't even need to know that number, but thanks. <laughs> Uh, I did want to know the number. It's just, I'm excited for this group. Um, you're more likely to be a high achiever. You're more likely to try and improve yourself, which I feel 100%. This has given me so many opportunities to be a better person. Um, more likely to be liked by your coworkers. Less likely to indulge in risky behaviors. And we're in some excellent company. And when I look at, when I did my research, I was so amazed at some of the things that, um, and the people that felt this way, um, Michelle Obama. Um, so who wakes up and knows they're going to be a first lady down the road? So she said, um, I still have a little imposter syndrome. It doesn't go away. That feeling that you shouldn't take me seriously. What do I know? Oh my gosh, how many of us have felt that? Um, and she shares that with us because we all have doubts in our ability about our power and what that power is. That's so true. Um, I remember being in a support group for some different things in our church and they told us, they looked us in the eye and said, you are so powerful. Like you have to own your power. And I was like, nobody in my life had ever told me I was powerful. And then I owned that. And even some of my passwords that, that those, the powerful and different statements are part of my passwords. Um, Tom Hanks, that was a, that was a, 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 a surprise for me. Um, no matter what you've done, there comes a point where you think, how did I get here? When are they going to discover that I am, in fact, a fraud and take everything away from me? That man has so much talent and he still feels this way. And this is a recent interview. Um, Neil Armstrong. Maya Angelou was one of my favorites. Um, she's written so many books and she had said she kept with every book. She felt like somebody was going to realized that she wasn't who they thought she was and take everything from her. Um, such a powerful woman and who's left a powerful legacy and she struggled with these feelings. So we're in good company. Um, things I'd want you to remember when imposter syndrome hits. Um, no one knows your residents like you do. Not one person. You're onboarding, you're learning how they do paperwork you're learning um if they can sign up for insurance you know I, that's been my thing in the last few years even just having them sign up for their medical insurance has been a struggle um and i'm not minimizing that i'm just saying you know things intimately about them um and they need you as does your program and your program leadership you're needed we're not told that enough but you are needed um tag me so our certification in our career. Um, they recognize that we're experts in our field and the certification exam is open book. So our certifying organization acknowledges that we cannot know all the policies and procedures. We just need to know where to get the answers. That's incredibly validating. Um, your drive and passion is worth as much as all the knowledge or years in the profession as someone else may have. So just because you're a new coordinator or you've been doing this for a short while and you're sitting next to somebody who's been doing it for 20 years or, you know, two or three years, um, doesn't mean that the passion that you have for the job is not worth all the knowledge that you can accrue. So to give yourself credit for that. Um, we're in a very unique field. I mean, residencies have been going on for years. We're just being recognized as professionals in the past few years. Um, Graduate medication, medical education is so unique and so interesting. Um, it's vast and always changing, right? We can't get bored and you can't get used to a policy or procedure because it's going to change. Um, it takes a very special person to be a coordinator and to be the background of your program. Um, that person's you. Like, it's each and every one of us. Um, I appreciate my residents. I feel like they appreciate me most of the time. Um, and I appreciate what they're going through. So that's the biggest thing. What are they going through and are we supporting them well? Or to the best of our ability. Let's not say well, let's just say to the best of our ability because that is well. Um, if you, I just recently read that if you only have 40% to give today and you gave your 40%, you gave 
even if you only had 40, you're still getting there and doing the job. So different ways we can address imposter syndrome. Um, so four ways to overcome imposter syndrome. Um, start attributing your success to you. Remind yourself that you contributed to it. I remember after my first site visit, I had no clue that what that was supposed to look like. It was before the internet. It was before um, we had some sort of internet back in 99 <laughs> and I had a site visit pretty quick. Um, and we had no one in the institution that there was no support network for coordinators. Um, the hospital actually owned the program. I worked for the university. Um, so attribute, so that success I had with that first site visit, we didn't get cited. We got continued accreditation. Um, that was on me and the program director. She was amazing. We worked together. Um, quit comparing yourself to others. The, the, the staff member sitting next to you is, has their own struggles, they're doing different things. Um, focus on improving yourself rather than proving yourself. We don't have to prove ourselves, just continue to work the best we can. And I'm sure some of you are going, well, yeah, I do have to prove myself. You're proving yourself every day when you come in and get the work done. You're, and even the days we don't get the work done because we're hijacked and uh, there's a train coming we're still getting the work done. That's part of this, this world. Um, except that you're a work in progress. Everyone makes mistakes and it's part of the learning process. Um, absolutely, that was hard for me. Um, I felt like after I was in the job a few years, I should know everything. And I finally took a step back and said, no, you, there's no way to know everything. Um, learn to fail better. I like this one. Um, some failure is inevitable. Um, and be sure to reflect and learn from the experience. I tell my residents this all the time, um, but it's taken me a while. Failure is how we learn. Um, I'm My learning style is give it to me, let me do it and fail at it, and the next time I'll do better. That's my learning style. Um, recognize when these thoughts enter into your mind and work to reframe the thoughts. Uh, share your feelings with mentors or trusted friends. Oh my gosh, Aria and I have been on the phone and Linda Matthews a lot in the past few weeks. Um, I've had a lot of great leaders in my life and recognizing they were like great leaders and then become trusted friends. Um, and remember, and, I've, and it finally took me a while to think, oh, they value me and my input. Um, let me scroll down here on the side a little bit. So, one thing it talks about here um, in the nine ways to cope with imposter syndrome, and I really didn't want to read off all the slides, but I do want you to hear the information because some of us are learn differently. Um, knowing the signs of we talked about, know that you're not alone. That's why we're all here together and there's 200 plus of us right now. Um, letting go of perfectionism. I've let it go um, to some degree. Let me, let me tell you, that's not 100% true for me, but I'm trying. Be kinder to yourself. So that's part of our wellness. Um, track your success, write it down. Um, here for our about year, yearly evaluations, we track things quarterly. That's so helpful for me um, to see, oh, I did get this done. Cause I'm at the back of my head with everything we're doing, interviewing, recruiting, ranking, getting ready for onboarding, whatever season you're in. Um, and then realizing, oh yeah, I, I did get that done. Cause we have quarterly, uh, like I said, quarterly um, goals. And I'm like, I didn't get it done, but I, there, there's a part of it that I did get done. Or maybe I got the whole thing done, but with everything in my head, I just lost track. Um, constantly talk with your mentor, uh, supervisor, program director. Let them know you're feeling. Let them know if you're having a hard day. Um, it's not whining. It doesn't mean that you're not. Um, it's just letting them know where you're at. We all have a lot going on in this world. Um, say yes to opportunities. It is scary as you know what. but it feels better. I'll feel better today when this is done. Um, I'll probably second guess myself and ask a lot of questions. Did I sound stupid? What, is, what was this like? What was that like? But unless we say yes, we don't know. Um, and then embrace the feeling. When you have a good feeling, when you've been successful, embrace it and celebrate it. That's so important um, to keep us going. Celebrate you. Um, I just can't say that enough. I don't think we celebrate ourselves enough. So let's talk about how we can 
some some things we can do to overcome this. And Aria, is there anything in the chat we need to address? Not right now. The comments that I've been reading are great. Um, somebody said that their organization does not support TACME. I don't wanted to say this in front of everybody. If you you make the first move to getting that certification, make mm -hmm. the first move, start talking with people and everything. And there's this uh, Carolyn Grissom. I'm sorry, but I'm going to read this verbatim. I used to work as a surgical technologist. Now, when I make a mistake, I just try to take a deep breath and say, at least when I make a mistake, no one died. Most of the time, I think <laughs> just laughs. Most of the time. I was a surgical tech for her and for our division. So I knew all of the surgeons that I work with. And that's kind of a running joke with all of us. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I, I think feeling worthy in our jobs is so important. Um, and I wanna go back to your comment a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, just took me off track for one second. Aria, can you read her comment again, please? Yes. I used to work as a surgical technologist. Now, when I make a mistake, I just try to take a deep breath and say, at least when I make a mistake, no one died. Most of the time, my PD just laughs. Most of the time. Well, and that's what I tell my, my residents as well, right? When they're When they make mistakes, I'm like, was a patient injured? you know, things like that. And they make mistakes all the time in the hospital. They make, and that's why our preceptors call us and let us know, hey, they need more um, training in this. They need to study more for this. So exactly. And that, that is a great attitude to have. Um, my attitude usually is, um, <laughs> cause I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't cuss today. <laughs> I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. Um, and I do hurt people. Coordinators can hurt people's feelings just because we're, you know, we're helping them learn to be a better person. Um, you know, I mark my successes. I, I left and um, nobody's throwing a dart, a picture, a dart at a picture of me on a dartboard. You know, um, those are some days how I measure my success. Um, so let's talk about how we can overcome imposter syndrome. Um, Acknowledging our emotions, um, trying to fully accept our emotional experiences, own our feelings, own when we don't feel good about a day, own when we, you know, it's like, I, I need to go home, I need to let this go. Um, remind ourselves that feelings are not always an accurate representation of reality. That is so true for me. I can go and tell a coworker how I felt about a situation, how I felt like it played out, and they'll be like, that's not what happened. Like, because I've internalized it so much. Um, if it helps to reflect on your feelings by writing them down and try to, try to, why do you feel like an imposter? Um, you know, maybe somebody made you feel like that. I mean, years ago, I sat in a meeting, a program meeting. I was the only woman in the room. Um, and one of the deans at the time looked at me and said, I need you to take minutes. And I was like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not here to take minutes, but he's like, I need you to take minutes. So that was hard for me. Like, I was like, I'm the, I'm here to give you information you need for this program and how it's going to work within the department. Um, but it was, it was a setback. Um, be realistic about your strengths and weaknesses. Although it's a cliche, it's true that we're all good at something, um, but no one is good at everything. Oh, that's so true. And I've finally realized people that are good at other things that even budgets, like I'm not great at a budget. Like I can write the budget, but reconciling it and doing some other things like I, it takes me time. Um, understand your skills and reflect on your strengths and weaknesses. It's okay to have weaknesses. That makes us a better person. Um, overcome perfectionism. We may have perfectionist habits. Um, we need to slowly, uh, that you need to break. Um, for example, uh, taking regular breaks and days off. Holy cow, that's tough for me. Um, to not look at my phone, to not read my email, um, use relaxation techniques. I've found that um, for my anxiety, that I've found a binaural beats, different uh, videos on YouTube and I put my headphones in and that's been very beneficial for me. Um, walking, this morning I came in, I knew I had to do this. I went through my notes a couple of times. 
I got up, I walked the floor, I stretched so I could be calm when I got here and I was doing this. Um, remember that mistakes are natural and inevitable part of life. So that's something that I've struggled with. Um, and it, it is, it's true. And I tell, and now I I'm tell my residents that they'll come to me and they'll be like, oh my God, I forgot to do this or I forgot to do that. Or my work hours weren't logged. That's a big one, right? Okay, here's how we can fix this problem, rectify it, put a reminder in your calendar, download the app, um, you know, find better ways to do things. Um, talk to others, like I've said, I think this is huge. Um, in our world where we don't talk to people, right? Um, especially after COVID, if you've got the opportunity to work some time remotely, we're um, texting, we're sending emails, um, we have a group me chat here, uh, but I, actually talking and not just texting someone, but talking and being able to hear the inflections in the voice, um, knowing you're not the only one that feels this way. And that's what I want this presentation to, to um, let everyone know. We're not the only one that feels this way. Um, and reaching out to our coworkers and our friends um, and people that don't, I, what, I've, what I've found is people that don't know about the graduate medical education world and residency, when you tell them all of it entails, they're like, what? They had no idea what it takes to become a doctor and no idea what the regulating um, governing bodies were that gave us everything we have to hit for these guys, right? Um, and you may be surprised when you talk to someone that they feel that way too. Um, any, just check in the chat real quick. What is, is there anything there, Aria? Uh, yes, everybody saying, um, some great comments. I would like to, um, Patrice, I'm sorry, but I need to quote you on this one. I apologize to my PD for something that I said to him in front of a group after the meeting and my statement, I was mortified. Who is it? Let me be honest. When I apologized to my PD in private, he laughed and said, Patrice, I did not take offense to anything you said because it was true and everyone needed to hear it. Exactly. Exactly. I So I've stuck my foot in my mouth a couple of times when I really did need to apologize. But more often than not, we over apologize. Um, everything we say, I mean, I don't say everything. Most... Let's let's rephrase this. So obviously, I'm, I didn't practice this talk a lot because um, I'm not good at practicing these things. I want I want them to be organic. But so our feelings are valid. Things we share with the program, they probably need to hear. Um, there are different settings to share different things. Um, so we recently had our rankless meeting. Um, my residents are invited to that. And I looked at them all and I said, I need you to be honest. We need to be honest when we're ranking these people because my feeling on ranking, and it's not the same with everybody, is that, um, and I tell my interviewees this too, if you get to a program and you don't feel comfortable with those people, especially if you do an audition rotation there, um, if you're there and you're not comfortable with the people, you're not going to be happy there. And you've got to spend three years for my program. And then if you do a fellowship, go where you're comfortable, go where you can speak your truth and people listen and you feel valued. If you go somewhere and you see that those residents weren't listened to, that they were just sit on their assignments and there was no talk or support, okay, you don't want to be there and you don't want to rank them because if you rank a program or we rank someone, um, there's a chance you could get them. So that that's all my that's that's what I tell my interviewees in my program. So in our rank list meeting, I said we need to be blunt, honest. My program director's there. He agrees. He wants to know their feelings on the interviewees because we want a good team that feels comfortable with each other and can communicate with each other. You spend more time as a resident with your co-residents than you do your wife, your husband, your kids. Um, so that's some of my truth right there. Um, let's move on because I hope we can have some discussion after this. So kind of at the end of my discussion, um, I just want to say, um, find your quiet place, find your peaceful place. Um, I loved this quote, never ever write off anything you achieved as merely being lucky. You're not lucky, you're hardworking and capable and don't ever question it. And so that's from Charlene Walters. I want to talk about some resources. So of course there's mentoring programs. I know AFMA has a great mentoring program. I am part of that. Um, our coordinator academy here, 
Um, leadership development programs, they're all across the country now and they are available to in, sometimes to anyone, but um, there's a great wellness one I'm trying to apply for now. Um, create your network. It's here. When we go to ACGME, um, Linda Matthews, my colleague, myself, Aria, will all be there as will several people here in the DFW area. I know this is nationwide. Um, go to the network events, take names, send an email. I, I did that early on when I would go to AACOM out in Baltimore and I was able to ask questions and reach out. Um, keep learning. Um, any conference is valuable. You're going to get something out of it. Um, we have so many options now for virtual uh, learning. Um, I'm a very passive, sometimes learner. I can listen to something in my office while I'm also working. Um, recordings. So as Aria talked about, our recordings are out there for the different um, presentations we've had. Go back and listen. Um, that's that's how I and I hear something differently and we're all multitaskers and so I always learn something new when I go back and listen. Um, the tag me certification. Um, I know some organizations don't support it. Um, it's it's very valuable. Um, it's it helped me get my job at UT Southwestern years ago. It um, I, you know you don't have to have it. Some some organizations require it, but it just it validates how it validated for me that I knew what I was doing or I knew where I could go to get the information because I doubted that for a long time. So um, I just want to say thank you. I see another mistake in my PowerPoint here. I'm not going to let it get to me. Um, keep working on the things that no one can take away from you. Make those a priority. Those are your character, your kindness, your personality, your heart, your growth. That Our growth is our personal responsibility. Um, your organization may offer opportunities for growth, but we have to take advantage of that. Um, your healing, um, your awareness, your peace, and for some of us, relationships with God. I just want to put that out there. Um, that's that's where I go. Other people have different um, places they go. Um, so I just want to say thank you, thank you. I'm going to quit sharing my screen, and then I would love it if we could talk some. So let's see. Hi, I see all your faces now. So. Kimberly. I'm sorry, Aria. Is it okay? I gotta, I gotta go. But yes, I just, no, 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 go um, I just, I wanted to share, Kimberly. I thought that was an absolutely wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for who's, everything. Who, who's talking? I can't see you. My Hold name's on. Honor Sanderford. I'm at Johns Hopkins. Oh, perfect. Hi. Thank you so, so much. I did. I just wanted to add one thing. Um, I had done some research on the imposter syndrome a few years ago, and. One of the things I found, and, and I think you lightly touched on it in, in one of your um, power in one of your slides, is that it seems to affect women more than men. Mm -hmm. And the reason I found was that because men have been in the workforce far longer than women have, you know, you know, particularly women in um, uh, oh, what's the word like physicians and scientists mm -hmm. and things like that, and so they don't have other women who could be uh, mentors and leaders for them. And I just wanted to share that I really believe that, the, well, first of all, I'm pretty sure this group is mostly women. I think that we have a responsibility to each other to lift each other up and to um, support each other, particularly in this job, yes. which is a very demanding job. Mm -hmm. we, we don't get the... Um, the, the, the emotional support and sometimes the financial support um, that we deserve. And um, so those are my, my things. I have to go to a faculty meeting now. Okay. All so, right. Thank, thank you, you, Honor. All right. All right. Um, so does anybody, so I, I'd sent out a chat on the Facebook group before about anybody that might've felt imposter syndrome at different times, if anybody would like to share their story or anything like I, we have, uh, wow, I almost talked an hour guys. I don't ever do that except to my kids. So, all right, Daisy, do you have your hand up? Or are you just saying, yes, you felt, I see a hand up. Okay. So I, um, I was a medical assistant before I joined um, graduate medical education. I was thrown into this position after the coordinator 
um, got an injury and was um, decided to retire. She was like, oh, I got hurt. I'm out of here. And we were one month before our first year, uh, our first fellowship ever. Oh, um, it was very, very scary. Um, yeah, that was three years ago. So we're on, we're going to be doing our fourth um, year next year in July. So, you know, I survived, you know, but I, I did have the, am I good enough for this? I'm only a medical assistant. I've never taken part of any kind of management of anything, yep. you know? So I, um, one book that I found that was really helpful, I posted it in the chat is called, she thinks like a boss. And this one's oh. about leadership. Um, she writes a bunch of books called She Thinks Like a Boss, and there's a bunch of other topics. I did post it in the chat. There is an entire chapter on imposter syndrome in this book. Um, so I found this extremely helpful. Um, I'm sure others would find it helpful, but I wanted to, you know, share this with everybody. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm not there yet that mm -hmm. oh, I've got this. Um, but Thank you everyone um, for support and love and, and whatever. And uh, let's just keep going. Yes, Great thank you, Jessica. Jessica. Yeah, I, um, I've actually, I, I don't sit in the clinic anymore, which I am sad about because I was closer to my residence. Um, but I, I remember when there was different positions open and different medical assistants or different people would come ask me, do you think I can do this? And I'm like, absolutely, you can do it. But what I tell everybody when I and when I've interviewed people or different things is number one, it's a lot of work. And what you do today is not going to make any sense until maybe next year. And then it kind of clicks the second year. You're like, OK, because we are very cyclical, right? Um, absolutely can you do it i'm gonna i'm gonna build you up let's do it let's go um but there are different skills we all need to attain as we're doing the job any job right um people don't just graduate from college and drop into a career and know what they're doing i know our our culture kind of preaches that but you still have skills to learn when you get on the job um so uh, absolutely and i i think uh what honor said and I'm sorry if I'm quoting the wrong name, but she said a building us up as women. That is so important um, that we get that. I, I know first coming in here years ago, um, we were not valued. The the admin staff, the coordinating staff, it was not a, it was not valued. And so now I know we're much more valued. Um, I do appreciate that there's more men in the field, and I've uh, mentored a few, and they're like, "Wow, how did you do that? Or how do you do this?" And so. Um, I like it that it's it's a growing field. Oh wow, this has been such an amazing talk. We reached the top of the hour. Kimberly, thank you so so much. Uh all your comments, I am going to post them in the Facebook group later. I am going to post the link to the recording. I've been re getting requests of where can you guys find the links to the recordings. I'm going to share them too. So um, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody, God bless <laughs> you. Enjoy, enjoy time off. Take your well-deserved time off. And I hope to, we all hope to see each other at ACGME later this month. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Aurea. It was great. Thank you.